Hello, I'm Fang Shuli. I'm from Tianjin University, and I'd like to share our work, AI Turbo, Unified Compute Allocation for Partial Predictable Training in Commodity Clusters. And uh, this is uh, our outline. Our work is divided into five parts, including background and motivation, at AI Turbo Design, implementation, experimental evaluation, and conclusion. In recent years, the parameter scale and the complexity of deep learning models are growing rapidly. This figure shows that the number of parameters of neutral language processing models, including GPT-2, Turing, NLG, and GPT-3, has increased from 1.5 billion parameters to 16 billion and 175 billion, respectively. And Facebook's model parameter complexity has increased by more than two times over two years. Training large models are very expensive. It even costs over $4.6 million to train GPT-3 using a Tesla V100 cloud in this instance. Such high cost limited research progress. So, how to improve training performance and resource efficiency of commodity cluster is a key challenge of resource management systems. To improve training efficiency, Prior work mainly results to, to two methods, dynamic job prioritizing and dynamic resource allocation. The dynamic job prioritizing methods assigns each job a priority that changes over time. The representative algorithm a least attended service and the shortest of job first. However, they all use fixed resource allocation policy, so the resource efficiency is very low. The dynamic resource allocation methods doesn't change the job priority, but adjusts the hyperparameters or resource allocation according to jobs, runtime feature, and the varying resource availability. They often rely on a predicting job model to estimate the training efficiency once resource allocation is changed. However, misprediction's especially for non-convergent models, would degrade the training performance. In order to obtain a better model, a developer often starts an iterative exploration process. They will submit training trials rapidly until a model with satisfactory results. So, a model may trigger multi-jobs. We observe the partial predictable feature of training jobs. First, partial jobs are predictable. In the picture on the left, the job with the red line is associated with smooth loss curves and fast convergence rates. And it is more likely run and completely successful. And its completion time can be estimated accurately using analytic or learning models. We call it predictable training. Meanwhile, the other two jobs, which have poor convergence, are often killed in the middle by its submitter at an unexpected time. We call them unpredictable training. Besides, we find predictable jobs are initially unpredictable. In the picture on the right shows that in the initial stage of online profiling, a newly arrival job is unpredictable due to the lack of profile information. As the training progress, more about its loss of curve and the resource utilization become available, and it may turn to the predictable. Prior resource scheduling approaches are compromised by partial predictable training. The predictable approaches like optimal make a poor decision when performance predicting error is high, whereas the unpredictable ones 
like terraces, may miss the optimal schedule without knowing the completion time. Our AY Turbo can distinguish the predictability of jobs and uh, schedule them differently. It not only improves the system throughput, but also improves the utilization of resources. Besides, in the existing large-scale deep learning cluster, we find that not only the resource utilization is low, but also the utilization gap between CPU and GPU is high. The figure on the left shows the CDF of the utilization gap between CPU and GPU of our cluster during a week. We find that more than 18% of the time, the utilization gap between CPU and GPU is more than 40%. The large gap is caused by the poor job scheduling and resource allocation policy and they do not manage heterogeneous results in a unified way. The figure on the right shows a corner cost. When CPU affinity jobs pick up all CPU cores in the cluster, other GPU affinity jobs cannot be started due to the bottleneck at CPU. In the parameter server architecture, not only the number of PS and workers, but also the resource type used by PS and workers, and the amount of resources allocated to them, also affect the training performance significantly. As shown in two heat maps, the training speed increased much faster initially over the number of CPU cores allocated to PS or workers, but stays stable after a central point. Among them, since parameter server need to send parameters to each worker, its CPU usage increase over the number of workers. The other two figures show that in the absence of communication pressure, one worker with one GPU is the optimal configuration, because one worker with multi-GPUs generates additional local aggregation overhead. When the communication pressure increases, the training speed of one worker with one GPU becomes much lower due to the large amount of data transfer. Configuration includes the number of PS, the number of workers, resource types, CPU allocation and the GPU allocation, and the possible interchangeability among them, create a massive solution space. It is very challenging to design a policy that is able to find the optimal one efficiently. Given those motivations, we design our system AI Turbo. Its insight is to optimize the training efficiency exploiting the partial predictable feature in heterogeneous CPU and GPU clusters. There are two challenge issues towards this problem. The first one is how to identify whether or when a training job became predictable. The second one is how to schedule the hybrid predictable jobs in heterogeneous CPU and GPU clusters. The basic idea of AI Turbo is that partial predictable training jobs can be identified accurately and scheduled on hybrid CPU and GPU resources in a dynamic and unified way. And this figure shows the overall design of AI Turbo. In order to solve the above two challenge, AI Turbo respectively proposed a general classifier and a unified computing distribution. Next, we will introduce these components of AI Turbo in detail. First is the general classifier. There are a large number of factors that may affect the predictability of a training job, mainly including three types. The first is the characteristics of the model itself, such as parameter size, model structure, loss value. And the second is the hyperparameters of the training framework 
such as the number of PS, the number of workers learning rate, epoch. Third is the job running state, such as the resubmission, CPU and GPU utilization, training speed, convergence curve. So, which of these factors should we choose? We evaluate the correlation between those metrics with its predictability using Pearson, Kendu, and Spearman correlation coefficients. And finally, opting five metrics that have a strong correlation with the predictability, including elapsed time, accuracy, loss value, throughput, and resubmission. By feeding all the 12 metrics into a random forest regression model, we further evaluate the impurity-based importance of those low and find the selected five metrics are still the top five metrics for classifying. So we design our general classifier taking the five metrics of each job as input. This table shows the accuracy result when the classification model uses Kinealist neighbor, logic regression, random forest regression, spot vector regression, and the multi layer percent patrol neutral network. The evaluation metric, including precision, recall, F1 score, and AUC. Among them, KN and RFR outperforms the other significantly, achieving a precision as high as. 99.8%. So we choose KN as the predicting algorithm in our binary classifier. Once the job is identified as predictable, it becomes possible to build an accurate predicting model to estimate its job completion time under various resource configurations. To predict the job completion time of a DDL job for achieving the desired accuracy, we adopt the combined submodel policy that predicts the remaining number of training steps and the step processing speed. SI and QI denotes the remaining number of training steps and the processing speed of a single step for job I. In the parameter server architecture, processing a batch of input data consists of five stages, forwarding, backwarding, transmitting, updating model, and applying. We model these five parts separately to get step statement model. For predicting the number of steps required for achieving the desired Accuracy. We further build a step number model to describe the convergence rate of each predictable job. Given the predicting models of predictable jobs, Airtable aims to derive a resource allocation and P parameter server and worker configuration for minimizing the remaining required service of all submit jobs for improving the long-term resource efficiency of the system. In each scheduling interval, the purpose of Air Turbo is to minimize the number of remaining service for all jobs. The number of service of a job can be divided into the number of service of CPU resources and the number of service of GPU resources. But this problem is a nonlinear integer programming problem, as it is NP-hard in general. We designed a novel utilized scheduling algorithm to solve it. Air Turbo not only prefers to allocate more resources to jobs that can benefit more from additional resources, but also encourages ones with lower resources efficiency to release resources from others. So. Our utility scheduling algorithm runs as follows. For each job I, 
iterable iterates over the five variables in set. Iterable selects the optimal resource scheduling strategy by calculating the number of surveys after changing the unit resource amount. And the, the figure shows the, an example of a turbo resource adjustment. The number of remaining surveys under the current resource configuration of job A and job B in the cluster is 10 and 16. Air Turbo calculates the number of remaining reserves after adding or reducing unit resources. Unit resources include PS worker, one CPU core of PS or worker, one GPU of worker. In the end, we calculate that job A increased by one GPU and job B decreased by one GPU. The overall number of remaining surveys is uh, Based under this trap strategy. So far, only the predictable jobs are ready for the actual de deployment and processing according to the two utilized queries. There are still a number of unpredictable jobs waiting in the LAS query. How to allocate the heterogeneous CPU and GPU resources between both predictable and unpredictable jobs is challenging. To unify the LS query and two utility queries together, we adopt the symbol border count voting methods. It is a voting system used for winner elections. A job receives a number of points from a sequence. The sum of points from different sequences decides the winner. However, since unpredictable jobs only appear in LAS query, well, predictable jobs appears in both positive and negative utilized query and LAS query. Applying border count directly will be unfair for unpredictable jobs. To solve this problem, we split the LAS query into two separate subqueries, including predictable LAS query maintains all predictable jobs in ascending order of their attended service and the unpredictable LS career maintains the unpredictable jobs in ascending order of their attended service. This figure shows that the predictable LS query is combined with the two uh, with the positive and negative utilized query to derive the number of points of all predictable jobs. The point of unpredictable job in the unpredictable LS query are doubled for a fair comparison. Then, both ranking of predict predictable and unpredictable jobs are combined and sorted in designing order of their points. And the continuous change of priority of job caused frequent job preemption, which resulted in hard overhead. We further organize the border count query into a MLFQ called the border count based MLFQ. Each query in the MLFQ has a threshold. The points of a job is token as its priority. Jobs are then put into their rep respect query according to their priorities. During the scheduling, jobs in a higher priority query are scheduled first and can preempt jobs in the lower query. In this section, I will introduce our experimental evaluation. In this table, it summarizes our test band platform used for air turbo evaluation. We build a workload dataset using the public traces released by Microsoft. And this workload uses the TensorFlow benchmark and the imaginary dataset. Air turbo has large improvement compared with recent work. First, Airtable reduces the average job completion time by at least uh, two times, and Airtable has significant improvements for long jobs and short jobs. Second, Airtable achieves at least 15% uh, improvements in the resource utilization 
and where the utilization gap is below 40% during 80% of runtime before. Airtable can increase it to 60%. Third, the overhead of Airtable is very small. This figure shows that if we resume a job on GPU, even for large models like ResNet 1.152 and VGG19, the overhead is within one minute. The table shows that the average profiling overhead only accounts for 2.23% of jobs overall training time. In summary, we present Air Turbo. It optimizes the training efficiency exploiting the partial predictable feature in heterogeneous CPU and GPU cluster. It is quite effective in reducing the average GCT of training jobs, outperforming the state of the art significantly. It is designed for commodity GPU cluster, which are shared by a number of engineers in a separate department. Thank you. Any questions?